Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. So we're doing a special series of podcasts which I'm recording over Google Hangouts. So we're doing audio and video because for some unknown reason, people don't wanna come see me face to face right now. But there's always opportunity and the cool thing is I'm able to now podcast with people from all over the world. So we're gonna get an amazing eclectic mix of people from, from different industries, different perspectives to share their story and tell us you know, their thoughts and feelings on what's going on right now and all of that cool stuff hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy we're live thanks for joining me and it's a real pleasure to have joyce and racer from double dutch how are you girls doing we're very good thank you for having us this is very exciting <laughs> pleasure no pleasure we like had in the diary a few times and we were going to do face to face but you didn't want to come see me which was <laughs> <laughs> of course we want to still see you <laughs> we're gonna make up over gin and tonic <laughs> yeah 100 100 percent. when this is over so so you both so you both live in london yeah. um so where are you, are you with your you, you've gone home now or, or what's the like where are you girls at the moment we have gone home um because we were in a tiny flat in london uh so now we've got some outside space which is better <laughs> Nice, nice. When did you when did you um, leave London? Uh, I think three weeks ago or something. Um, beginning of April. Yeah, yeah. How have you How have you found it? Like, have you found it like being at home, lockdown? Yeah, like, I think yeah. it's interesting. Um, I think definitely the first two weeks we focused so much on like pivoting our business so much more to like online and digital, but now I'm almost kind of used to it. I think. It's in a way less stressful. I think there's more time in the day. So I think there's ups and downs on this whole lockdown. Um, yeah. But it gave us the opportunity to really rethink our business model and really seeing what's the priority. So I think all in all, it's probably, it might have had like a good advantage for us. Really awesome. Cool. We'll hear about that. We'll hear about that. Just be interesting on, on like kind of home life. Um, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm a real people's person. I love... Like meeting someone face to face and I get a lot of energy from that stuff um, and so for me it's taken like a, a few weeks to just adjust to like being at home video calls are cool but it's not quite the same as meeting no. someone face to face have you found the same thing or have you, have you adjusted quite well to like your new routine <laughs> ah no I think it's really difficult to just kind of the things you took you take for granted like just go Friday afternoon to a pub with some friends and I think just go have a little nice April spritz on the terrace I mean especially now with the nice weather but yeah. um for we can do a little party with the two of us <laughs> um I think yeah it's definitely been a big change but um yeah getting used to it now yeah I think yeah. for us I think that we are lucky enough that we are like in quarantine together so at least we can have a gin and tonic together but I think it's definitely yeah. challenging and yeah, I can't wait to go out and have a gin tonic and just enjoy life a little bit more. <laughs> Definitely. How, how have you coped with like your team? Obviously your team are at home. Yes. Have, have you been doing like kind of regular Zoom calls or like how, how have you kept everyone like motivated? We'd, we've been doing loads of Zoom calls. Um, we've got one weekly kind of more um, casual gin and tonic Thursday afternoon uh, Zoom call with everyone. Uh, and then we've got one-to-ones almost daily with the rest of the team. Um, I think WhatsApp also has been quite important. Like with WhatsApp, we're just like it's sending business updates, but also just like more like fun memes and whatever. So I think yeah, in, yeah. in terms of like our contact with the team has been like really good. And I think most of our team has been amazing in taking the most of it. So I think maybe even with some of the team with, on the sales side uh, particularly, I think maybe we have more contact now than during um, normal uh, life, okay. especially the team that are, um, because we're not all based in London and um, half of the team is remote. So we don't tend to meet so often face to face. So I think now with the weekly Zoom calls and a few times a week, the one to ones, I think maybe there's even more contact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm actually having that as well. Even people in the office, you kind of yeah. you come in and you just nod or you're like, hey, yeah. how you doing? Whereas now it's like, we've got to speak and you're yeah. on the video and you've actually got to be like, what's going on? 
and obviously nothing really is going on right because you're at home you haven't been out and so but you still have to like it's cool you get to know each other quite well um i found it like i've almost got closer to people than i would have done just in the office it's a weird it's a weird one i think yeah. what's going to be very strange is selling when this is over in a, in a mask you're going to like go to clients and you're gonna to have to put your mask on and try and sell a drink or recruitment services or whatever you're trying it's going to be really interesting that new kind yeah. of paper, paper world i think it's going to be different as well. i don't think we'll be doing so much face-to-face -face meetings and i think this time kind of has learned everyone that you can do a meeting over a zoom call or just pick up the phone and i think maybe we'll do slightly less face-to-face -face meetings going forward and i think i think this gave us a good opportunity or i think lots of people have seen this as a good opportunity to see how you can work more efficiently there's no point in traveling three hours back and forth for a meeting that of course face-to-face -face meetings are still going to be super important and i think people buy from people not from products but i do think people have really really experienced now how efficient it can be without the unnecessary travel yeah that's true i think office space in big cities is gonna is gonna struggle yeah because you're right like a lot of big companies certainly to start with when we when we come out of lockdown not everyone's going to go back mm -hmm. at the same time right you might have like someone going in a couple of days a week someone another couple of days and you just won't need so much space yeah. you won't need a desk per person yeah. um you know and then you get some people that really love working at home others really love going into the office then a bunch of people in between so it's it's cool this trend was coming but it's just got like a massive like shot in the arm and it's just accelerated it's gonna be it's gonna be inter interesting yeah, very true we were it's supposed to we just put in an offer on like a lease on this story house in so where we would build like a bar downstairs and then like this activation events space oh, okay. in the top floor and then like have offices for the next three years that we can really go to team i mean i think what a god's present that we didn't weren't able to sign it before <laughs> COVID because now we're thinking half of the team is probably going to prefer to work remotely. They don't even want to come into a nice yeah. office anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Do you think that will be the case? Do you think after this like taste of working from home, you'll be happy with people working wherever they want to work? Uh, I just think, I think being in an office is still much better because I think you've got like the personal contact and I think it's crucial. But I just think maybe for example, one day a week or I don't know. I just don't think it's going to be exactly the same yet. And as you said, yeah. if you have 10 people, I don't think they're all 10 of them are going to be in the office. I think it's going to be at like 80%, 70% maybe. And then and maybe it's a bit more like flexible. People want to come in a bit later to avoid uh, the traffic or like really busy yeah. tube stations. And I mean, I think we always encourage flexible working hours anyway. So I think that's only going to be, going to increase more. Yeah, no, that's true. Do you want to just we'll just run through what you what you actually do? So to double Dutch, presumably you're both Dutch and you're twins, in case no one knew. And when when did you start your your brand and how did it all come about? Uh, so with Double Dutch, we offer a range of ten delicious and innovative tonic waters and mixers. So we do uh, flavors like your Indian tonic water, skinny tonic water, and then we have like more exciting flavors like a cucumber and watermelon, pomegranate and basil. And many more so we started double dutch now we're in our fifth year of trading um we always so we are dutch as you said and in the netherlands they actually invented gin uh, in the 16th 17th really? century so it's the birthday of gin. London or something i don't know why <laughs> but, well the dutch king of orange he actually brought it to the uk and made it a very uh, british product <laughs> uh, but, so we, our parents they always had a distillery as a hobby and we kind of grew up knowing all the local distilleries build up a really big passion for good drinks and then uh, when we were students at university here in the netherlands we always used to make tonic waters and our own sodas for friends and family they we would throw like parties and our friends would bring the gin or the vodka and we would make like our experiment with different sodas and uh, flavors so our friends they started calling us the tonic twins <laughs> uh, and it was just like a fun thing we did um, and then we graduated started working in finance didn't really enjoy that <laughs> so then we moved to London to do a second master in tech entrepreneurship at UCL and 
it was then that we realized, wow, the gin and tonic hype was even bigger in the, here in the UK than it was back in the Netherlands. But choice of mixes were like as limited as back home. So we wrote our dissertation about the concept of new type of mixers. And then when we graduated, our university gave us an award for best dissertation of the year. And with that, they gave us our initial investment. So we got funding from a university to produce a first batch and then took it from there. Wow. Amazing. That's a great story. Had you always wanted to do your own business or did that kind of the idea come to you during like the masters in London? I think we always, our family's quite entrepreneurial as well and have their own business, but I think we always thought we'll uh, start our own thing maybe later in life. And I think uh, our kind of university in London and our dissertation project kind of pushed that forward. And then we just decided to start straight out of uni. Brilliant. Brilliant. What's been, what's been like, what was the most difficult thing starting? <laughs> so many things <laughs> every day. <laughs> I think probably the, uh, <laughs> it's just super hard to get your first customers and you probably get like 150 no's yeah. before you get your first yes. Um, so I think yeah. that's definitely it could, can be really demotivating and kind of, um, yeah, I think it's cute that you're, if you have a co-founder, I think it's slightly easier because you can pull each other up um, and you yeah. just kind of need to persist and pull through the nose and just find someone who wants to support you. Yeah, it's tough. I've, uh, I'm in my 10th year now. My 10th wow. anniversary is on the 1st of April. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And, and you're right. Like the big, a big thing is being comfortable with, um, with losing you know, or with yeah. rejection or with failure or yeah. just that you can't always win all the time and you're going to get a lot of no's. And as long as you keep picking yourself up and keep going and don't quit and, you know, you just keep going and you turn up to work and you do your thing and you have a lot of patience because things take a lot of time, right? It doesn't just like you start up a business and suddenly, you know, it takes take a lot of effort and a lot of energy, um, but you get there eventually. Um, yeah. It's good. And it's nice to have the two of you together. Obviously, you know each other so well. So I presume you bounce off each other and you complement each other. It's good to have a co-founder, I think. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah def I think for us, it's great because we 100% like trust each other. And it's just much more time efficient because you don't need to do any tiptoeing. You just be straight away. But we do fight a lot. I mean, yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> but we make up quickly as well. <laughs> Was it, has, it been, has it been weird then? Like from just being like, you know, sisters, twins and stuff to actually like running and building a business together. Like, has it been a bit of a change or was it, was it just a natural, quite natural. progression? We always, we've been quite close. We don't have any other siblings. Um, so we always been in the same uh, class. We went to, we always, we, we've lived together during our student years. It was quite natural. We've always been really close. Yeah. That's really good. Do you have different jobs or are yeah. you both? No, different jobs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Raisa does everything in terms of like marketing, sales and team. And I'm responsible for like finance operations uh, and export sides of the business. Awesome. Awesome. And so how, and so what, how did you start then? So you, we, we, did you start selling, trying to sell wholesale, um, like to, to bars and restaurants and stuff like that? How, what was the, um, so we started, um, into the Westman's bar hotel scene. We started super niche, uh, kind of started in the West End to the premium accounts, the five star hotels and the high end cocktail bars and really focused on that. Um, definitely one of the biggest challenges and struggles in the beginning was that we didn't really, even after a year of market research, we didn't uh, realize that bars and restaurants, they don't buy from manufacturers di directly, but they buy via wholesaler. <laughs> um, so then we kind of, we kind of had the chicken and the egg problem that a wholesaler doesn't want to stock you if a bar doesn't want to stock you, but the bar doesn't want to stock you if a wholesaler doesn't stock you. And wow. that was definitely kind of a, um, definitely a difficulty. So then we finally got a wholesaler on board um, and that really helped us. But we awesome. definitely focused really small geographically and type of and channel and type of accounts and then kind of over the time, just kind of made it broader and, and um, expanded uh, into other areas. Great. And then so the focus to start with was in, uh, was in London? Yes. Yes. Yeah, fine. And where do you manufacture? 
we, UK. We, we've always manufactured in the UK, we still are. Uh, but we started initially in London, then moved to the Midlands. Now most of our production is in Northern Ireland. Um, but then we also produce in Europe and in South Africa because we're 100% car we're working to becoming 100% carbon neutral. So we're trying to get our um, environmental footprint as low as possible. Oh, so, you, so and South Africa is is a market for you now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was supposed to be there to see my grandma, but they wouldn't let me in the country. Flights were cancelled. Oh yeah. wow! When did you want to go? I was supposed to go two weeks ago. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> but I like, literally right in the middle. My grandma was so excited to see her. She's ninety-eight. Oh and, wow! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So hopefully next year. I go. I go like once or twice a year there. It's such. It's mostly to Cape Town. It's such a great place. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. It's a really, really good spot. So on, on COVID, how have you, how have you found business? Like what's, what's been the effect and, and what have you done? I think when it first started, we thought, oh my God, this is good. I mean, it was terrible. We forecasted almost for, um, I mean, a terrible uh, decrease. I think for yeah. us, we always used to be very focused on restaurants, bars, hotels. So that obviously fell away. But then our online and retail has picked up massively. Um, and we saw a really good increase there. We also just launched our online web shop directly on our website to go direct to consumers. And I think that's definitely be, it's been a lot better than we expected it to be. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's been great. I think we've been lucky enough to be able to pivot super quickly into digital and into online, um, and online sales have definitely, I mean, for example, Amazon has grown by about thousand percent in the last two weeks so i think wow. for us yeah. yeah it's been it's been really really good and i'm super grateful for the whole digital movement what's coming so yeah it's crazy it's, been, it's, been good. it's probably better us right because i guess your profit margins are going to be bigger selling direct yeah um, and and yeah maybe i'm sure and uh, it's yeah, it's interesting and then how, how have you found then the distribution because presumably you weren't selling much direct to consumer and now rather than maybe a few wholesaler clients you were shipping to you have thousands of individuals yeah. looking for a few bottles of tonic or whatever is that been a big shift or i think we've definitely seen the community really getting uh together um our log logistics and procurement partners it's really pivoted super quickly as well so actually it's been no it's been relatively easier than i would have expected it to be um our, yeah. yeah our production suppliers have also been able to keep on with their production schedule so it's been so far so fine yeah awesome and then so you, to be given uh you've got different manufacturers in different countries so that's probably been great for you right because if it must is it, it must be challenging getting the product from one country to another right now yeah it's slightly yeah. more challenging but um they are it's it's possible to go to customs it's just taking more time so while for example a load from um belgium to switzerland would have taken two days and it might not take four days because of customs and like delays um but business is going through so i think yeah. the governments have been quite helpful with that yeah awesome and then how have you found working with amazon i mean if your sales are going a thousand percent, probably some of that those hundred and seventy-five thousand people they've had to hire is going to <laughs> pack and ship your your products. But um, but that's amazing. I mean, if if that's a similar story across other brands, I mean, yeah. this virus just uh, it's crazy for Amazon. Really? I've spoken with many other brands, and everyone's kind of seeing a really good uplift. So they must be busy packing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I think mean, then the super nice thing, especially about like the food and beverage industry is like everybody really came together, like so many, so many distilleries are now setting up their online shops and they are buying then double dutch. Like now we on our online um, shop are buying um, spirit brands and like we're all keeping like business within each other. And like, so I think it's been great that everybody's like really supportive from like spirit partners to suppliers to customers. That's really cool. One thing you notice walking around London is, you know, you have the you have the recycling bins, like the green recycling bins. 
So I walked around my area, I went for a run and like almost every single recycling bin is like overflowing with like wine bottles, <laughs> like gin bottles, <laughs> vodka bottles. People like a good <laughs> drink in lockdown. <laughs> yeah, they love it. Literally either they're getting, they're probably going on, a, I'm trying to get fit and going on a run and then coming home and then just going through yeah. their, going through their alcohol. There's actually a great guy in my area. I'm in Islington in London and he does home cocktail deliveries. Nice. Amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. So he sends me the menu on WhatsApp and then you, you like order your, your, your cocktails and then the next day he delivers them to your door. Brilliant. Amazing. It's great. The community pulls together. There's just some guy also that drives a black taxi and he drives around and he delivers like cases of wine to people. So, <laughs> like, there's a, there's a, it's funny. There's a neighbor nearby that um, they get a delivery every other day of wine. And then you know you see the black car drive up and it's like, oh, they've gone for their wine again. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Um, what about like, have you found obviously bars and pubs? I mean, they're probably going to be the last ones to yeah. to reopen, right? I mean, I think we might end up seeing less of them on the high street. I mean, a lot of the pubs were, were starting to close anyway, I think, in, in the UK. Mm. Um, so do you see the future for you, for you more online now? Do you think that's going to be a, a trend or do you think we'll we'll get back to enjoying a nice drink. I think we'll certainly go back to enjoy enjoying a nice drink in a bar or restaurants and <laughs> pubs. And I really hope that most of, uh, most of the people are gonna pull through. And I think there are starting to become some really good government initiatives. So I do hope that, this, that the whole pub and, and bar scene isn't gonna be changing too much when we get out of this. But obviously online is becoming more important. And I think there was already such a big trend over the past three years and that's just kind of accelerated massively. But I still think it, it's just a really different thing to be enjoying a nice drink at home with your family or go to a pub and have like a, a night out. Um, so I do hope that doesn't change too much. Yeah. And I think if I look at myself, once the lockdown is over and the hospitality is open again, the first thing I'll do is start enjoying <laughs> gin and tonics out of my home and not in my garden again. So, 100%. Yeah, 100%. I think there's so many amazing concepts, especially in London, and so many amazing restaurateurs and publications that it would be really a shame if, if, some, if a part of that is go isn't going to make it. And I think lots of, of the bigger drinks companies have... Um, initiated amazing charity supports for like those pubs and restaurants that are struggling at this moment. So I think okay. it's just, it's going to take a while before everything is going to back to normal, but people are social people. I mean, we're social animals. So animals. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Once there is a vaccine, you'll all see us back in the pub, <laughs> in the club. Drinking Definitely. Vaccine. You're going to like get a t-shirt be like, I'm a survivor or like cuddle me. I've had Corona. Or yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, I can't wait. I was supposed to go to a festival in Malta uh, on Friday. I wanted to try and go to Ibiza this year. I wanted to like, you know, there's lots of fun things. We'll get back to it. Yeah. Um, you had some good plans this year. South Africa, I mean, Ibiza, fun. festivals in Malta. <laughs> I mean, it's it. It's my friend's, it's my friend's birthday in Malta. Where he'd like, it was a big birthday for him and like he planned everything and we're going to a nice festival and, but yeah, he had to cancel everything. And then, but it will, you know, it will come back. It's made us more, even more like, you know, we'll party even harder once yeah, this is over. Yeah. It'll be fun. On the marketing side, interested to know what you've, like what you've been doing. Have you been doing anything different? Have you been doing more content? I mean, what's been the, the focus? Definitely we swifted everything to digital. Um, so we are doing, we didn't really put a lot of, um, focus our effort in digital before uh, we were always kind of saying we should do more we should do more but then you know how it goes <laughs> so yeah. this kind of pushed us to actually do it and I think it's interesting we're uh, investing more in content we're uh, working with a digital uh, media agency we're pushing our social channels a lot more we're trying to find different ways of engaging with our uh, audience we're doing more live things on Instagram and more Facebook lives and um, oh, cool. Yeah, I think it's interesting because bef we, before the crisis, we had about 50,000 followers on Instagram, but they were all like organic followers. And we always, I don't know what to say, but we probably didn't appreciate them 
enough. And I think now with Corona, we're really offering like more different content and you see like engagement has gone up so much more. And I think it's a great opportunity to have like, to really get loyal customers and really get a community that's loving everything about Double Dutch, but also about flavors and new type of content. So I think it, on that side, it really has improved our, yeah. our social. Just made us think about changing it as well. Yeah. 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 It's good. To, it's really good to generate relevant, interesting content for yeah. your audience. And not, not to sell, but just exactly. to... Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Educate, interesting content engagement how have yeah. you found doing what, what do you do live then what are you doing on facebook live we're doing uh every thursday at 5 p.m tonic thursday <laughs> where we're hey. interviewing so today, yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. interviewing uh we're doing all this kind of a live demonstration with someone else so we've had um a yoga teacher we had a chef who made some uh, recipes with double dutch last week we had yeah. an artist who made who uh, gave like a demonstration on how to start painting during lockdown tomorrow we have a nutritionist or no today we have an, a nutritionist talking about kind of how to make smoothies in the morning and kind of wellness program so we're doing different stuff every week we're doing a barbecue session in two weeks so nice. trying to not just only about i think just kind of giving slightly more different and interesting content on not just double yeah. and not just the drinks world but other uh, stuff to do in Corona. <laughs> love that. I love that. Did you find it easy to like get the tech, learn how to stream live, get the mic, get the camera? Like, no, little... <laughs> we're really not so tech savvy. <laughs> so every week there's a new issue. <laughs> I know it's funny. I've I've pivoted my my podcast to video casts, yeah. and we're going to be doing also. I'm doing live soon too. But I've got, I went down this rabbit hole of technology. <laughs> of like camera microphone what to use platforms it's quite interesting uh it's great but look, lovely to speak to you both i'm really uh really happy to see you both like pivoted quick doing well you both look really happy and enjoying it which is great and uh look forward to seeing you in your new bar in soho <laughs> if, you <end> <laughs> if you end up taking it <laughs> so. thank you so much for having us it was <laughs> great to talk to you uh, and you um, and stay safe and healthy you too. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye.